Finding LGBT influencers or accomplished LGBTQ plus individuals is far easier now than it has ever been, but this was not always the case. Even back in the early 1990s, many popular LGBTQ plus people were scarce. This lack of LGBT representation not only made otherwise marginalized people feel alienated, but it also prevented cisgender and heterosexual people from even knowing that we exist. Luckily, with more and more of them being accepted and being able to come out of the closet, there are more influencers today than ever before in all of history. These individuals not only made strides, but some even opened the doors for the acceptance of LGBTQ peoples, exposing an otherwise uninformed society to this community for the first time and allowing them to become more comfortable with people of all genders and sexualities. This reduces bigotry and alienation, which in turn helps people to see us as people, and not as the other. This is why it is so important to praise those who help make LGBT lives better. This is either done through their activism, or even through just being themselves, so that they provide inspiration for millions of people. Troy Sivan. I'm on the path to becoming someone I'm equally terrified by and obsessed with. My true self. Troy Sivan is a 22-year-old singer and actor. He was born in South Africa, but due to rising crime rates, his family moved to Australia when he was just two years old. His fame started over 10 years prior when he started to post videos of him singing on the new, at the time, site, YouTube. When he began posting videos, he would cover songs such as Tell Me Why and I'm Yours. His views over time started to climb, and he later started to incorporate other topics in a vlog style, including Australian Boy Does Accents, which he posted in November of 2012, and by July of 2013, already garnered over 421,000 views. Today, that video has over 2.4 million views. His YouTube career in general is also looking good. With almost 7 million subscribers, he is the third most subscribed to channel in Australia, just after How To Basic and Planet Dolan. His channel also boasts almost 1 billion views overall, showing that his videos reach a large audience. This does not even take into account his social media following, which millions of people follow him per platform. He also got more publicity due to his role as a young Wolverine in the 2009 movie X-Men Origins Wolverine. Due to his rising popularity as a young and talented individual, he would sign a record deal in 2013, thus jumpstarting his career in music. His talents and publicity has helped him appear in many places. He has been on The Tonight Show, The Late Show, and even on the YouTube channel, The Vlog Brothers. The main song in his album, Happy Little Pill, not only topped the charts in many countries, but it earned gold status by the Australian Recording Industry Association. He later became one of the 25 most influential teens of 2014 by Time Magazine and even won the Teen Choice Award. He has also been essential when it comes to helping LGBTQ plus homeless. Before he started on his 2018 Bloom Tour, he started a collection of socks and tampons, which he can give to local LGBT charities in the cities that he performs in. That way, he can be helpful in the lives of many LGBT people who have been left homeless for a variety of reasons, including being disowned by family. Soon after he started his music career, he posted a video simply titled, Coming Out. He published this in August of 2013, Doing this made Troy nervous, but he felt like he had to get this off his chest. In fact, he did not even ask permission from his record company if he could come out, 
and felt that he might face a backlash from his fans, as well as his career, for doing this. This is probably the most nervous I've been in my entire life, he said in the video. However, none of that seemed to be true. His video, which has to this day garnered 8.2 million views, was met with love and admiration from his fan base. And not only that, but he also received a letter from the record company a few days later, congratulating him on his bravery. His coming out story can even be heard in his albums. For instance, his first album, Blue Neighbor, discusses what it was like to come out of the closet, while his second album showed a lot more confidence in his sexuality. Troy claims that this is a form of confidence that he wished he was able to portray at a much younger age, but was held back from. Despite being out, Troy does not want to feel like a gay icon. He believes that no single person could properly represent the diverse and vast LGBTQ community. There are plenty of other people who need to be heard first. We're starting to get, finally, a diverse group of different LGBTQ perspectives. That's why I politely don't want to take on that gay icon thing. I'm just trying to tell my story. Despite this, so many people have cited him as a source of inspiration. His coming out has helped countless people be more comfortable with who they are. The first thing I think that's important to say is that we will survive this, of course. You know, I think that that's important to acknowledge. You know, all hope is not lost. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that we should be complacent, obviously. And I think that now um, is as important a time as ever, if not more important, than to kind of mobilize and, and just band together and, and um, you know, kind of come together in strength and, and do our best to to assert our rights. RuPaul Charles When you become the image of your own imagination, it's the most powerful thing you could ever do. When you hear about drag queens and drag culture, the first name that probably comes to your mind is RuPaul. He is mostly known for his popular TV show, RuPaul's Drag Race, but has been known for music videos and acting he has done in the past. Due to his fame, he was able to help normalize drag culture, which in turn helped many people who identify as LGBTQ+. We're all born naked and the rest is drag, is a mantra that RuPaul takes to heart. As a result, he is able to portray drag as an art style and as a form of expression. It is a way to fight gender norms and, as he puts it, a big F.U. to male-dominated culture, a real rejection of masculinity. This is definitely true when it comes to toxic masculinity, which shuns, bullies, and harms people for acting outside of binary gendered lines. Many people, especially those who are more gender non-conforming, have found comfort in RuPaul and his activism. His art shows that it is okay for men to subvert normal gender stereotypes, as well as for women to not have to take appearances so seriously. RuPaul has mentioned this himself when it comes to his show, saying that it helps people who are otherwise turned away by society. This helps to show people that regardless of what box society wants to put you in, that you do not have to fit in that box. You are welcome to break free of the confines of society and become more liberated in your gender expression. We're dealing with people who have been shunned by society and have made a life regardless of what anyone else thinks of them have decided, said RuPaul when discussing his show with The Guardian. It shows tenacity of the human spirit, which each of us watching relates to, and we root for them. I think that is what is so captivating about it, seeing how these beautiful creatures have managed to prevail. Due to his intense support for the LGBTQ community, he was named as one of the most influential people of 2017 by Time magazine. He also won two GLAAD awards, one in 1999 for helping LGBT rights, and won in 2010 for his show, RuPaul's Drag Race. After he started receiving a large amount of popularity, he was signed onto MAC Cosmetics in order to model for their brand. This made him the first ever drag queen supermodel and opened the door for more people who were gender non-conforming. Recently, he got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, which made him the first ever drag queen to get a star. Outside of his accolades, he has also been noted for his work with charity as well. For instance, 
The Mac AIDS Fund was ignited by working with RuPaul, thus helping to give millions of dollars to fight the epidemic. This is not the only thing either. RuPaul went on the Queen Latifah show to mention that she is selling branded chocolate bars. A portion of the proceeds from the bar goes to the Jeff Griffith Youth Center. This center works to make the transition into independent living and to create a comfortable space for in-school, at-home, and at-risk youth to socialize with other lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and questioning youth in an alcohol-free, drug-free, safe, educational, and affirming environment. RuPaul does not seem to have a typical coming out story, as a lot of it seems to be unknown. But his coming out seems to be more gradual, as he stepped into the limelight as a drag queen. However, as a child, he seemed to see the oddities when it came to gender expression. He felt the modern predisposition with appearances to be overt, and that it was something that should not be taken all that seriously. He even said this during an interview he had with Oprah back in 2017. As a kid, I thought, is everybody getting that this is kind of an illusion? Then, at about 11 years old, I found my tribe on PBS in Monty Python's Flying Circus. I thought, okay, they get it. They're irreverent. They're not taking anything seriously, and they're having fun. That's what this is all about. In the mid-1980s, he became part of the blossoming drag scene. He would perform in clubs, and in the early 1990s, he was signed to a record company. During this time, he released several songs, including the single, Supermodel, which reached the top 50 in the pop charts and number two on the dance charts. I never set out to be a role model. I may have set out to be a supermodel, but not a role model, RuPaul explained to Vogue magazine. But I accept the responsibility, and it's an honor. Well, that's how things happen. I mean, who would have thought that a uh, six foot four black drag queen with blonde hair would be an international star? Well, I would have thought that, and that's what happened. Gus Kenworthy. When you're able to be honest with yourself about who you are and finally can present your authentic true self to the world, you feel so much better about yourself, and it makes it easier for everyone else to feel better about you. Augustus Gus Kenworthy is a 27-year-old freestyle skier. He is known for his skill when he represented the United States when he won the silver medal in the 2014 Winter Olympics in Sochi. He also attended the 2018 Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang. He is also known for winning the AFP World Championship titles in 2011, 2012, and 2013 as well as winning the World Cup men's halfpipe in 2015 and 2016. When he was younger, he and his friends would go to the park and practice tricks, even long after the lifts were closed. When he and his friends would be told to go home, they would then practice tricks on homemade slopes. Growing up, he was an extremely competitive soul and sought to be the best. I always felt like I had something to prove, like I had to work twice as hard to make sure I got it, he says. I knew I didn't want to be a good skier. I wanted to be the best. While he is currently in a relationship with American actor Matthew Wilkes, he did not always feel welcome in his own sexuality. Kenworthy says that he knew he was gay when he was as young as five, but he felt ashamed of those feelings, and that drive to be seen as masculine and cool drove his extremely competitive spirit. I was insecure and ashamed, said Kenworthy. Unless you're gay, being gay has never been looked at as being cool. And I wanted to be cool. In the world of sports, one thing that you are generally unable to do is be yourself. Kenworthy would feel pulled in all directions as he had to deal with hiding his sexuality as well as work hard to make sure that everyone sees him as a type of alpha male. They say it's a community of individuals and everyone is doing their own thing, and it's not a team sport, so you get to be yourself, but you don't really. Between the contests and the shoots, everyone's always skiing and training together, Kenworthy says. But it is the same. It's totally like that. Be creative, be yourself, be all this stuff, but also, literally, just be everybody else.
he has also been able to give to charity in any way that he could. For instance, he recently did a photo shoot where he stripped down to his underwear for the company Me Undies. The proceeds from the shoot were able to go to the Los Angeles LGBT Center. And when he is not helping other people, he is helping small animals. After the Sochi Olympics, he ran across a bunch of stray puppies. Not wanting to just leave them, he decided that he was going to take them home and take care of them. These dogs help him to calm down before matches and Olympic events. He started to come out to his family first in 2013. His mom, brother, and best friend were very supportive of him. Despite that, his biggest day would not happen until October 22nd of 2015 when he came out to the world. He met with a reporter a month prior to talk about a cover story for ESPN magazine. Kenworthy was nervous about coming out to the sports world, especially due to the culture of alpha male masculinity. The morning the article came out, I remember my fingers trembling to post what I had written and posted the link to the article saying that I was gay, said Kenworthy during a press conference in 2017. I was so scared, and then it was like instant relief. All this weight off my shoulders. I was crying as soon as I posted it. However, despite this, he decided to go ahead in coming out. He hoped that coming out would help diminish homophobia that was prevalent in the sports world. Coming out was something that he hoped would help and inspire many people in the industry. However, he had nothing to worry about. In fact, the opposite seemed to be true. Visa, Toyota, Deloitte and more chose to endorse him after he came out, making him even more marketable out than he was in the closet. Despite this, he wanted to make sure that he was not only known for his sexuality. As a result, he worked with his sponsors to make sure that the advertisements found a good balance between diversity and making sure that people saw him for his talents and personality. In 2018, he won headlines after the Winter Olympics, after Wilkes kissed Kenworthy before his run. This was shown on live TV and showed a pivotal moment for LGBTQ plus athletes who have not had much in the way of visibility. I honestly think I would just tell anybody on any end of the spectrum in the LGBT community that sometimes it, it can feel rough and it can feel hard, but it does get better. There, you can have your own chosen family. like. I feel like I've met people since I've come out that have become like the most integral part of my life and that will be the same for them and there's always light at the end of the tunnel and just to kind of stay strong and stay true to who you are and um, we love you. Neil Patrick Harris Sometimes you can have the smallest role in the smallest production and still make a big impact. When it comes to Neil Patrick Harris, it is hard to find something that he is not accomplished in. He is an actor writer, comedian, singer, producer, and much more. However, he is mainly known for his comedy roles on TV, such as acting in How I Met Your Mother, Doogie Howser MD, and more recently, a series of unfortunate events. He actually started his career at a very young age and was a child actor. One of his first forays into acting was in a 1988 drama called Clara's Heart which starred Whoopi Goldberg. This earned him a Golden Globe nomination. He also starred in Purple People Eater later that same year. Along with his acting and singing career, he has also been known for being a philanthropist. He has supported and helped out with dozens of charities, including the AIDS Foundation, the American Cancer Society, the Trevor Project, Feeding America, and dozens more. A lot of the causes that he gives money for are things that are very close to his heart. For instance, he started raising funds for cancer research after his partner's mother passed away from leukemia. He also spent one Thanksgiving with the Los Angeles Mission, dishing out food for the homeless. One of the reasons why he is so philanthropic is due to his two young children. By giving to people who are less fortunate, he is able to teach his kids, quote, a valuable and much needed perspective on life. He feels that it is better to give to people who can use the help than to not help when you are able to. This is why the couple have made charity a core foundation in their life, as well as in their parenting style.
When it comes to people coming out of the closet, I doubt that you will find too many cases that are as wholesome as Harris's reason. He went public with his sexuality back in 2006, mainly because he was dating his now husband, David Birdka, at the time. For me, I fell in love with the dude and started spending all my time with him, and therefore, you don't want to be suppressive of that, Harris said. I didn't want to disrespect David. I didn't want to make David feel like he didn't exist in my life. And at the same time, I didn't want David's identity to be the guy that's dating me. Canada.com published an article discussing the possibility of Harris and David's relationship. However, Harris's publicist claimed that Harris was, quote, not of that persuasion as a response. Harris himself, who was otherwise open about who he was and did not want others to talk for him, made a statement saying, I am happy to dispel any rumors or misconceptions and am quite proud to say that I am a very content gay man living my life to the fullest and feel most fortunate to be working with wonderful people in the business I love. Harris and David have been together for almost a decade and announced their engagement in 2011. They are also parents to twins Gideon and Harper whom they have raised since birth and are, as of writing this, eight years old. And I think the notion that kids in small towns that have never had the opportunity or the ability to even speak anything about being gay to their friends, their family, anyone in their, in their world are able to make a call if they're in a time of crisis and have someone sort of talk them off the ledge. It seems super simple, pure and good and has helped a lot, uh, saved a lot of lives. So any way we can help in that, we will. Adam Ripon. I think I've shown the world I'm a fierce competitor, yes, but I've also shown them that I'm a fierce human being. Adam Rapone is a figure skater who is known for their many accomplishments in the field. He started skating when he was just 10 years old. His mother would skate and as a result would bring him along. It was then that he found his passion for the sport and was later coached for seven years. This training has paid off for him big time. In 2010, he won the Four Continents Championship as well as the 2016 U.S. National Championship. He also won the 2008 and 2009 World Junior Championships and was even chosen to represent the United States in the 2018 Winter Olympics. In the 2018 Winter Olympics, he won a bronze medal, making him the first openly gay male figure skater to earn a medal. He was also the first openly gay person to win on Dancing with the Stars in season 26. This has opened the door for increased LGBT visibility in the athletic world. In March of 2018, he was honored by the Human Rights Campaign's Visibility Award. He also received the Best of the Best Champion Award from the National Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce. Also, earlier this year, he started a fundraiser on Just Giving, which was able to collect over $40,000 for the GLAAD Ambassador Program. This program helps to support LGBTQ plus youth and empowers them to be themselves. Ripon says that he sees himself getting involved in other charities and causes that he agrees with and that speaks to him. He just wants to make sure that he is able to represent the charity or cause well, regardless whether it is with the LGBTQ plus community or with some other cause close to his heart. He first found out that he was gay back in the third grade when he had a crush on a girl. At first, he said that he wanted to kiss her, but as soon as he thought about it, he realized that he did not want to kiss her at all. This feeling confused him as he was young and did not really know what it meant. It was not until the fifth grade that he got his first crush on a guy. At the time, he did not even realize it was a crush. It was October 2nd, 2015, that he publicly came out as gay. Soon before, Skating Magazine wanted to do a cover story for him and his friend Ashley Wagner. Coming out was something that was not a big part of the article. In fact, it was pretty obscure in the article, and it took a while before people read the whole article and saw what it said. When it comes to coming out, Rapone feels as if it is a constant, never-ending process. My coming out wasn't one moment. 
It's a process that never really ends. Coming out is about finding out who you are in stages, through moments of self-discovery. This shows that we are never truly out, as we have to come out to ourselves as well as to others. Finding out your identity and feelings, especially after you have been suppressing them for so long, is a long and arduous process, but one that is necessary. Rippon feels that through coming out, he is more able to be himself, as well as help others out in the process. But I think that it's so important that we still speak out and we take action. And do you help inspire people to get out there and take action as well? LGBTQ plus representation in the media is vital, and it is something that we should strive for. More representation helps the younger generations who might be struggling with their identity and who they are be able to come out and have more confidence. This is also why it is so important to praise LGBT role models when they make big strides and great accomplishments. This is something that is not just important for their work with LGBT issues, but also in their personal lives as well. With more people coming out of the closet, more people, especially in a heteronormative environment like sports, will experience less homophobia. We deserve to live in a world where we are not hated due to who we are. And thankfully, as time goes on, that world is starting to become a reality.